All right, in this video, we will talk about something that I have been kind of ignoring so far because in my experience, students taking a physics e &M course don't actually always use this symbol and that can get confused when they see it. So we will talk about what exactly is electrical ground and what does this symbol mean? So before we talk about that, I want you to actually forget about voltage and circuits completely and we are going to talk about elevation. Now this is not a perfect analogy, but I think it helps people understand what exactly we're talking about when we use that ground symbol. So this is going to be my crude drawing of a mountain next to the ocean here. And say, if we refer to the elevation of something, I might say that the top of this mountain is at an elevation of 10,000 feet. And if I say that, it is implied that you know that I mean I am referencing that elevation relative to sea level which is what we have defined implicitly as zero feet. Okay, so elevation is defined between two points. It's a distance, but we don't bother saying relative to sea level because 99% of the time, that's what we mean. So similarly, I could say that the bottom of the ocean is maybe at 2,000 feet below the ocean, or if I'm using up as my positive scale here, I'd say that's at an elevation of negative 2,000 feet. And that's all normal. But I could choose a different point as my zero reference level. For example, let's say, I don't know, there's some city on a mountain at an elevation of 5,000 feet relative to sea level. I could define some different scale where this is now zero. Okay, so I'm going to define this as my zero level instead of sea level. And none of the other points have moved, okay? So the distance between this city and the top of the mountain or the ocean hasn't changed, but the elevations when expressed relative to this new zero point are different. So for example, the, using this scale, the top of the mountain is now at an elevation of 5,000 feet, and the surface of the ocean is now at an elevation of negative 5,000 feet, and the bottom of the ocean is now at an elevation of negative 7,000 feet. But again, using both of these scales, the distance between two points doesn't change. So on my first scale there, the distance between the top of the mountain and the bottom of the ocean is 12,000 feet. In my second scale here, the distance between the top of the mountain and the bottom of the ocean is still 12,000 uh, 12, feet. So nothing physically moved. All I did was move where I am defining zero. Ground with circuits is conceptually very similar, and that's what we're going to talk about next. So what have we seen so far in this course? We've seen things like, say, a circuit with a battery and some resistors, and maybe I will label the nodes or um, points in this circuit, say points A and B, and my, I might ask, oh, what is the voltage at point A? And that is different than asking, what is the voltage difference between points A and B? So when I ask just about the voltage at point A, it is implied, again, just when I talk about the elevation of a point, and it's implied that I mean relative to sea level, when I talk about the voltage at point A, it's implied that I mean relative to ground. And again, just like with sea level, we don't usually explicitly bother defining that as zero. In a circuit with a single battery, 99% of the time, it is implied that ground is the negative terminal of the battery. Okay, so... Again, there are going to be some exceptions to this we'll talk about later, but again, for simple circuits like this that you'll see in a physics class just with batteries and resistors, nine times out of ten or even more, it's implied that this point is ground, so what we don't bother doing is drawing this extra ground symbol on here to very explicitly define that that point is ground and that's what I'm defining as zero volts. But adding this symbol does not necessarily change the meaning of the circuit at all. And this is where I think students who didn't see this symbol in physics start to get confused. So we're going to have a little aside for a second here. There are actually a couple different symbols you might see used for ground. The one I've been drawing literally means earth ground. So that means technically that you are talking about something like building wiring where you literally have a copper rod or a metal pipe driven into the ground that you are electrically connected to. So you are physically connected to earth ground, which kind of acts as a charge reservoir. That is different from the symbols, for example, for chassis ground, 
So if you have a vehicle that is not electrically connected to ground, but your circuit is grounded to the metal chassis of the vehicle, or depending on which textbook or website you look at, you might see this triangle symbol used for signal or analog, or I think maybe sometimes digital ground, depending on the circuit. So conceptually, these all mean the same thing in terms of what you are defining as zero volts or your reference level for voltage. Physically, depending on the circuit, they might mean something different in terms of what, 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 if anything, is there a physical wire connected to. So in this course, I am going to use the earth ground symbol, even though that does not necessarily mean, for example, in the case of a battery powered circuit, that you literally have an external wire connected to ground. So some people don't like this and they'll say, okay, you really should use either chassis ground or the signal ground if you're not using earth ground. I am doing this just because in 90% of the textbooks and electronics websites I see when you're looking at things like homework problems and examples, they still use the earth ground symbol, but I want to put that caveat in this video that just because you see this symbol in a homework problem or you know, you're building a circuit in a lab, that does not literally mean you need some external ground wire. Many times, for example, because if you're working with benchtop equipment like an oscilloscope or a powered breadboard, that is plugged into a grounded electrical outlet anyway. So you don't need some external wire running off your circuit that you need to go ground somewhere. Again, that's not always the case. So if you're doing a lab, you should check exactly what you need to connect. So when I use this symbol in these videos, I just mean that is where we're defining our C level or our zero point for voltage. So you might wonder if, okay, 99% of the time we're using the negative terminal of the battery as the ground, why would you ever bother drawing the symbol? And there are a couple different scenarios. One of which is simply to make the circuit diagram more compact. So I could also draw this diagram and just not even bother drawing the battery. I would just label it, say have some input voltage V in. I go to my two resistors and I draw my ground symbol like that. And when you see something like this, and you know maybe I have an output voltage as well. This is something called a voltage divider that we'll talk about in a future video. When you see a diagram labeled like this, it is implied that these voltages are measured relative to ground. Again, I could define, say, two other points in this circuit and say VAB is the voltage between those. So where I've explicitly defined two points in the circuit that are not ground. But when you see a standalone voltage just referenced at some point, it's implied that it's referenced relative to ground. So in this case, I've just made my circuit diagram a little narrower and more compact because I didn't bother drawing the battery over on the left. The other case you might see it is as circuit diagrams start to get more complicated. So if you have, I'm just gonna make something up here, some <clears throat> messy circuit with a bunch of resistors in series and parallel. As diagrams start to get more complicated, eventually, if you do have that battery drawn, it, it can start to be sort of a pain to draw lots of different <coughs> wires all the way back to a single ground point. It's not, not a very big deal with the diagram I've drawn here because it's just one line down here at the bottom. Oh, that got really messy, sorry. But you can imagine it, as circuit diagrams get more and more complicated and really big and messy, sometimes it might not be feasible to draw a line all the way back to ground without accidentally crossing something else or making something messy. So what you'll see there is multiple ground symbols used and it is implied that again unless stated otherwise there's kind of special cases of circuits that might actually have multiple different grounds it is implied that all of these grounds are connected so if you see a diagram like this where each resistor has its own ground <coughs> again all of those are zero volts so that is the same <coughs> as drawing a diagram that has all of those points connected by a wire but again sometimes depending on the diagram it's just easier to put individual ground symbols in different places. And you'll, you'll also see the same thing for power supplies and voltages. So the Arduino Uno is a great example of this. If you pull up the schematic for an Arduino, you'll see lots of lines up to five volts and lots of lines down to ground. I think this is actually a fourth symbol that I didn't mention. Sometimes I think you might see a flat line labeled GND like that for ground. So it's really messy. So rather than drawing a ton of lines all back to a single five volt and a single ground in that diagram, they just put these individual symbols all over the diagram wherever they apply. So these are, the, again, the two scenarios where you're more likely to see that symbol. You're probably not going to bother drawing it if there's a single battery like this, but you can make things a little more compact. And then next we're going to talk about a third scenario where you have multiple batteries and there it gets a little trickier in terms of how you can define ground in different places. 
All right, I'm gonna draw two circuits here and then ask you to pause the video and think about the answer to a question. So circuit A is gonna have two nine volt batteries in series connected to a single resistor R. And for this circuit, we are going to put ground down here at the negative terminal of the lower battery. And for circuit B, and sorry, I should have defined, this is gonna be point one, and this is point two in that circuit. For circuit B, we are also gonna have two nine volt batteries in series, connected to a single resistor. Oops, forgot to draw the resistor. And for this circuit, we are gonna put ground in between the two batteries. And we're also gonna call this point one and point two. And the question I'm going to ask you is, is the voltage difference between points one and two greater in circuit A, greater in circuit B, or is it the same in both circuits? So think about that for a second, pause the video, see what you think, and then come back for the answer. Okay, hopefully you paused and did not just cheat and keep watching. And the answer, and many students get this wrong when I give this as a pretest at the beginning of a class, the answer is that the voltage difference between points one and two is the same in both circuits. And I think students who have not seen the ground symbol yet usually get confused by this, but hopefully if you remember our elevation analogy earlier in the video, this makes sense. So again, if I have my, my top of my mountain and the bottom of my ocean here, the difference, the distance between the top of the mountain and the bottom of the ocean doesn't change if I define zero at a different point, right? If we have global warming and my sea level rises a thousand feet, Difference between the top of the ocean and the bottom, the uh, top of the mountain and the bottom of the ocean is the same. Same thing here. It doesn't matter where I define ground. You could even put it up here at point one. The difference between points one and two is 18 volts in both of these circuits. Okay. The difference between each point and ground is different in each one of these circuits. So here, this point would be nine volts, and this point would be plus 18 volts. Here this point would be plus nine volts, and this point would be n minus nine volts, but the difference between each other is still 18 volts. So in an intro electronics class, you probably won't encounter this until you deal with operational amplifiers, which we won't get to until later in this course. They usually require a split positive and negative power supply, so that's when you'll have two different DC power supplies with the ground referenced in the middle like this. And for plenty of circuits, you'll probably only encounter one battery, or even if you do have multiple batteries in series, you will still just have ground, which you know you may do to get more voltage. <clears throat> Many times ground will still just be the negative terminal of the lower battery. But people get tripped up by this and you're going to encounter it later, so I wanted to cover it now in this video where we're talking about ground. In our next video, we will circle back to that voltage divider, which is a very useful circuit that you will encounter, encounter pretty frequently. So we'll talk about this circuit and derive the equation to get V out as a function of V in and the two resistor values.